A disingenuous American reporter was put in her place for trying it with the ex-minister of Greek, Giannis. Take a look at this video. I've been very concerned lately about China. They are now all over Africa, you know, buying things and investing over there and getting those countries dependent on them and supporting, you know, non-democratic people. And I'm just like whom? Well, we come. We are in a country that supports Saudi Arabia. Yes, that's yeah? true. Right. So, so suddenly we have a problem with, uh, you know, superpowers supporting non-democratic people. <laughs> yes, I mean yes, I do. You know, they're they're in Africa. They're they're lending money to countries to build ports and different infrastructure. To build what? Port. And harbors. what's wrong with that? And well, because countries that need ports get ports. But they're making people dependent on... I mean, I know, it's the same thing that we've done, which is no, it's horrible not. around the world. They are, they are far more humanistic than the United States ever was. <laughs> really? Okay. Absolutely. Great. So... Let me give, give you an okay. example. Of course they are, trying, they are peddling for, in, for, for influence. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, but they are non-interventionist. Absolutely non-interventionist in a way that Europeans, the West, has never managed to fathom. When it comes to the influence of China outside its borders. I have to say, firstly, it's quite remarkable that they don't seem to have any military um, ambitions. Secondly, Africa. I'll give you an example, a specific example, Ethiopia. 2004, because it ha I happened to be there and I, I have some uh, first person, first hand experience of it. They went into Ethiopia, I'll tell you why they went into Ethiopia, because they suspected it was oil. <laughs> because China is a major industrial power, but it lacks primary resources. Now, instead of going into Africa with troops, colonially, destroying the country, killing people like the West has done for the last hundred years, what they did was, they went to Addis Ababa, and they said to the government, we would like, uh, we can see you have prob problems with your infrastructure. We would like to build some new airports, um, upgrade your railway system, create a telephone system, and rebuild your roads. And we'll do this all, f all for free. No strings attached. We don't want anything from you. And they did. Why did they do it? Because it's soft power. Because they, now, it, it, because they knew that if oil is uh, uh, discovered, and it was discovered later, then, of course, the Ethiopian government will be much more open to Chinese oil companies coming there. They have never combined their investment with imperialistic... Can you imagine if that was a German company or an American company? <laughs> That's why I'm saying I don't think you should worry. Okay, I won't. China has earned their advantage over us in larger part due to being one race and being a one-party government. They don't spend all their time arguing with each other like Americans do. We had a good system until the liberals ruined it. This Democratic Party isn't going to do anything about China. China owns them. Biden is too worried about electric cars that we aren't ready for yet and having a $500,000 fence put around his beach cottage to keep people out. Check out what this guy commented about China and Africa. China offers temporary infrastructure in return for vast access to natural resources. The country could become wealthy from its unaccessed natural resources, but corrupt African leadership are motivated to allow China to have those resources. Here is how it works. China offers to build a hospital. An African leader promises a hospital if the people elect him. So they do. China gives the leader a few hundred thousand dollars under the table and spends a couple million to build an entirely unsustainable hospital. African can't even staff it, much less supply or maintain it. China gets tens of millions worth of aluminium or timber or whatever. The hospital caves in a few years later. China got what they wanted. The African leader got money under the table. Africans are left with nothing, having given away their source of wealth, abundant natural resources. How truthful is this, guys? Give me a feedback to whether you agree with this guy or not in the comment section. 
Now back to the video of this ex-minister of Greek and the U.S. journalist. It's almost hilarious to see this mainstream media reporters act like America can do no wrong. The American government is this innocent entity that is trying to fix world problems, and that is just the only good partner that other nations could ever have, and painting a narrative that it's the others that are doing the horrible things, the Russias, the Chinese of this world, not America. So they continue doing this, even though their job is supposed to reveal the truth and tell the people what's really going on in the world and be a voice of good. That's not how they use their voice. However, they usually use it to manipulate and to mislead people. And I'm glad the former minister educated her right there in front of the whole world. And now, maybe she won't try to mislead people. And I'm glad he called out the fake concern that she has for Africa and he who told her that China is more humanistic than us. By us, he means the West, the U.S., the E.U., and it's just satisfying to see disingenuous people get corrected in front of the world. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get out of here now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.